Hello, everybody. Uh, so let me introduce me. I'm Stefan. I'm the owner and the, and the winemaker of uh, Chateau Saint-Marie. So Chateau Saint-Marie belongs to my family since five generations. So um, it's located in the earth of Entre-de-Mer. So let me explain you, uh, first of all, the, where, where is the region. So we are in Bordeaux, and this is the right bank of Bordeaux. Uh, so you have two banks, and uh, this is separated by a river called uh, the Garonne River. So we are on the right bank of the Garonne River. Uh, so we are just next to saint emilion which is at uh, approximately 20 kilometers from, uh, from my estates. And um, uh, we grow, which is quite special for Bordeaux, we grow white and red grapes. Traditionally, you know, a lot of red wines from Bordeaux, but we have also the chance to, uh, to do some uh, white. Um, so the name St. Mary comes from uh, a very small abbey next to the estate, uh, where the monk uh, of this abbey used to produce the wine. So they are starting uh, to make the wine on the estate at the 14th century. And the name Saint Mary means Holy Mother. Uh, so this is a very religious name. And uh, all the story is uh, behind, behind the estates is about the, the religion. So the monk used to be here. And after the monk, my family took the estates at the end of the 18th century. Uh, nowadays, um, to give you an idea of the production, uh, we produce more or less 500,000 bottles per vintage, which is not a big, uh, big estate. This is average for, for the region. Uh, do you have any questions so far? No? Okay. Okay, let's start with, uh, with the whites. Uh, and talk about the, the vinification of the white before tasting. Um, so the white come from um, three different grapes. We have the Sauvignon Blanc, the Semillon, and the Muscadère. So this is the three traditional grapes of Bordeaux. And uh, in our blending, we use much more white Sauvignon. And uh, this is typical from, uh, from Chateau Saint-Marie. This is always much more Sauvignon. So, um, we end harvest the bunches, we press it, and we have a very clear juice, and we let it ferment it in a stainless steel tank during approximately uh, uh, two weeks, and after we let it on the lees. So the lees is a sedimentation of all the yeast and um, all the bacteria that you can have in the wine, and this lees gonna give some. Uh, very rich aromas and some very and some rich richness in the wine. So we don't age in oak barrels. We age only in stainless steel tank during six months. After this aging, we do the bottling, and uh, and this is ready to drink. So let's start to try and to taste the the whites. So Chateau Saint Marie. This is called vieille vin, so it means that this is a selection of very old vines, uh, average 30 years old. It means that we have some vines over uh, 80 years old and some were under uh, 30. Um, so we open the bottles. So you can see this is with a natural cork. And we are on a vintage 2019. So uh, you can see the, 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 the color is very light. Uh, it's very bright, so we don't have any oxidation. Usually when the, when the color is a little bit oxidized, you can have a, a very deep yellow color. This one is very bright and uh, very light in color. It means that we, we, are, we are on the very young wines, and, uh, but it's already uh, very open and ready to drink. 
Um, so the first nose, you can smell uh, it's, uh, this is the first noise is, is really the expression of the white Sauvignon. Uh, so most of the time the Sauvignon Blanc give these aromas of grapefruit. It's very fruity, it's very, a uh, grapefruit. Um, what you can have also is um, uh, passion fruit, uh, some mango aromas, uh, pineapples. So it's very exotic aromas. And the second nose is much more on the, what we call uh, abricot taste, who come from the Semillon grapes. And the Muscadel grapes, the third one, give a small touch of Muscat aromas, which is uh, much more the, um, sorry? Roses. roses aromas? Roses. A lychee. So this is a combination of very fresh fruit. Uh, so you don't have any oak taste, as I explained before. Uh, this is only in stainless steel, so, um, so it's very, very, very aromatic and very fresh. So if you taste it. It's also very crispy and very fresh in the mouth. So you have a nice balance with a good acidity. This is one point very important. On, the, on our vinifications. We don't do the second fermentation called the malolactic fermentation. So uh, that you can have on the burgundy wines. So it's very fresh and we want to keep this acidity and a little bit of saltiness. These wines are made on this type of soil. So it's, uh, I don't know if you see well, uh, this is a clay and limestone. So the top is clay and the subsoil is the limestone. And uh, the limestone is a sedimentation uh, of the ocean that we used to have. So that's why in the wine you can find a little bit of saltiness. It comes from this type of soil. So you can see it's very poor uh, soil. So we don't produce a lot. It's a very concentrated. Uh, concentrate fruit, uh, so it gives these aromas also in the mouth. Um, so the wine are very open. Uh, we try to, um, uh, to, um, to, to do the vinification and to produce this wine to be taste and drink in the two or three first years. So it's very easy drinking uh, and um, you can drink it very easily with a um, with oysters, with uh, seafoods, uh, with sushi, with uh, um, fish, raw, all kind of raw fish and, uh, and seafood. It's, it's a, a, a fresh, easy drinking wine. Maybe I go too fast. Is it okay so far? Oh, so, so far, so far okay. I think I think everybody's following uh, following well so far. It's okay. Uh, everybody should have had the first class just now. <laughs> Sorry. My my English is okay for you. The accent is not too difficult to understand. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. All right. So. This wine, as you were explaining, so there's no uh, second uh, fermentation, but the, there's lees in it, because I, I had it the other day, and the lees sort of brings sort of more that richness texture to it, right? Uh, in the wine compared to wines who do not have any lees aging. Uh, why did you no. decide not to, sorry? No, 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 I, I hear you. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. Uh, why did you decide to age it on lees and not just let the freshness of the Sauvignon Blanc? Has it always been done that way or did you decide to do it uh, once you took over the property? No, it wasn't a traditional way of aging. Uh, it's quite a, a, a quite modern style. It means that we, we really want to have a lot of roundness and a lot of aromas. And all the lees, this sedimentation after the, the fermentation, contains a lot of proteins, a lot of aromas. Uh, so the wine are much more aromatic and, uh, and you, you can keep them longer also. So 
I explained you that it's it's better to drink it in a in the, in the, the first years or two years after the um, the, the after the after bottling. Uh, after bottling. But, yeah, but after this kind of aging, uh, you can keep it much longer. Okay, noted, noted. All right, so everybody should have had a first glass of the uh, Sauvignon Blanche, Chateau uh, Marie, Entre deux Mers. Why is it called Entre deux Mers for those who have never heard of this appellation? Okay, so uh, the, the, the real traduction of Entre deux Mers means between two seas. In fact, this is between two rivers. So as I told you, on, on, on the south, you have the Garonne River, and the north, you have the Dordogne River. And Entre the Mer, it's in fact between these two rivers. But why don't we call it sea if it's not rivers? Uh, so I will, I will try to explain. Um, we are not so far from the ocean, from the Atlantic Ocean. So at this stage, the rivers are, are, are still salty. They are not, um, how do we say, uh, um, they are still salty. Uh, yeah, uh, the, 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 the map was nice. <laughs> oui. uh, okay, so you see the map, the entre de mer is all the green part, all the green in the middle. And you can see on the left, you, the, the, the Atlantic Ocean is very close. So you have the two rivers, uh, the south and the north. And at this stage, they are uh, salty. So that's why we call it sea. And also, at each tide, we have a big waves coming from the ocean. It's called the mascare. This is a wave that, that uh, some, some guys surf every, uh, um, not every day, but uh, you, have, uh, you have these waves uh, more or less each week. Um, and the waves can be, can, could be, can be uh, big. Uh, it can be uh, two meter high maximum. So all the, um, all the old peoples used to call it mer, so sea and not rivers. That's what, and, and the fish that we have in this river are salted fish. This is not the, the um, spring yeah. water, the natural yeah, fish. Yeah, it's right? a, a sea sea fish, not fresh water. Not, not fresh water fish. So that's why we call it sea and not rivers. All right, okay, thank you for okay. clarifying, yeah. Uh, let me see before we go on to the red, if anybody has a question that they'd like to ask on the first wine regarding the Sauvignon Blanc uh, that we have today, or sorry, the Entre Deux Mer, if you wanna ask a question about the Appellation or about uh, the vineyard in itself, please do not hesitate to do it now, or just general feedback on the wine. All right, let me check if anybody has a raised hand. Um, I'm going to go over to Leroy, who said it was very good. Uh, I want to check with him if he had any questions or not uh, about the wine. Okay. I'm unmuting you now, Leroy. Hi, Leroy. Hi, hi there. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good. No, no, I, I was referring very good to the feedback, uh, the, the sound and the, the English and stuff like that. I'm only having the red wine, so I've not started with the whole experience with you guys yet. I'm waiting eagerly though. All right. Okay. Well, we'll I'll come back to you then later on uh, regarding the red wine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Let me see if someone else then uh, in maybe in the, in the, Vicinity has tried the white wine. Uh, let me check. Um, all right, I have a question actually, Stefan, from a Guido yes. who would like to know a bit more about the region and why it is considered such a famous wine region. Um, so this is the, the most important region for the production of uh, red Bordeaux. Uh, this is the biggest one and the, one of the oldest one. Uh, 
Um, so as I explained at the beginning, this region was uh, created and, uh, and, um, and the first production of wine was at the 14th century. Um, so this region is, is good for, the first reason is the type of soil that we have. Uh, so for the white wine, we have a very different type of soil. This is a very uh, massive region. Uh, in terms of size, uh, it's more or less, I don't know if it, it will give you a good idea, but this is 30,000 hectares, 30,000 hectares, the region. And we have very different type of soil. And we have some soil who fit very well with the, with the white grapes. So it's this type of soil. I don't know if, if you see well, but so it's a very brown and white soil. So they are very, very good uh, for, for this. And how we, as we are very close from the ocean, uh, we have this influence of the Atlantic Ocean. We, good, we give some freshness, some we can have a good acidity in the wine, and we can also have a good uh, concentration in the wine. So that's why this region is very famous. And, um, and we have also, it's, I show you the difference. This type of soil is much more for the red. So I will explain you later uh, what kind of soil this is. Um, so first of all, we have a strong story in this region. Second, uh, we have a very uh, beautiful type of soil and terroir. Uh, and the third one is the climate. Uh, we have a cool climate uh, region. Uh, with a big influence of the uh, Atlantic Ocean. And we have, uh, and, and also, of course, uh, we have a, a, a family who have uh, making wine over uh, uh, five generations. So we have a strong, <laughs> a strong history in the winemaking. And it also helps actually for those who, who have never learned about the Bordeaux region, wine region in general, the fact that it's so close to the ocean and to rivers in the past actually really helped with commerce uh, in the region and internationally. So this access to the sea allowed uh, Bordeaux wines, entre de mer wines included, uh, to be able to be exported and spread around the world. So it really helped with the notoriety of the region as well. Sorry, I was adding a small fun fact into there. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, does anyone have any more question on the white wine or feedback that they'd like to ask uh, Stefan? I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm gonna bother you guys again. I'm gonna go over to see uh, Juven <laughs> and Marie, see if you guys have any comments on the first one. All right. Hello. Uh, Stefan, the, the, the wine is very, very good. Um, we, we like the sweetness, we like the freshness. Um, and I, I think on the nose, the first nose right, reminds us very much of the Moscato or the, the Muscadel in it. Uh, the Muscadel taste. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's, it's very fragrant. Very, 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 yeah, the Muscadel aromas yeah. is very uh, typical from, uh, uh, these aromas are very typical from the Muscat grapes. And the Moscato uh, is one of the Muscat grapes. Um, so you have these strong aromas of lychee and roses. So, and uh, we just blend it with 10% of muscadel and uh, it's enough to give a lot of taste. Right, yeah, so it's, it's nice and fragrant and, and very pleasant. So you get a treat um, on the nose as well as in the mouth. The mouthfeel is um, quite, 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 quite robust. Uh, it's very fruity, uh, and, and the kids are liking the wine. Uh, so I, I think <laughs> all around quite a good wine. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, Jiren, for the feedback. Okay, kids are having uh, having wine. They fit in with the French kids. <laughs> we usually start wine pretty early. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, let me see if anybody else any, has any questions or if you guys want, uh, you can ask if another question comes to mind later on. Uh, we're then maybe going to pass on to the second wine. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, sure. 
Um, so now let's talk about the red wine, which is uh, the most important uh, production for us and the most important production for Bordeaux wines, of course. Uh, so the story of the red wine is very, uh, uh, is very old in, in, in the Bordeaux region. And in entre le mer this is more or less the same. It's a, maybe a little bit older than the, the white grapes. So it seems like the first monk used to produce red wines in the entre le mer at the 12th century. Um, so nowadays, the, the, uh, as we are on the right bank of Bordeaux, uh, we plant much more Merlot grapes. Uh, we have a tradition in, in, uh, in, in Bordeaux. We used to say that on the left bank, you have much more Cabernet, and on the right bank, you have much more Merlot grapes. Uh, on Chateau Saint-Marie, uh, this is also a selection of VAV, so we need very old vines. So most of them have been planted by my grand uncle and my father, and average is 42 years old. And uh, the blending is Merlot, 72%, and 28% of Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, so why we have choose this type of, uh, of grape variety in, in this region? Um, the first uh, reason is the matching we, and, and uh, fitting with the type of soil we have. Uh, so I show you the, the type of soil we have on the, on the white was clay and chalk. And for the red grapes, uh, it's a very light and red and poor mm -hmm. soil. It's called uh, uh, alios and gravel. So this is, a, I will show you the small stones. This is, uh, I don't think you see, this is very small stone, red, uh, and uh, the, the soil is very poor. So, and the subsoil is still, uh, is still the limestone. So we have this type of, of uh, this type of gravels on the top, and the subsoil is limestone, uh, and it's very, very good for the, Merlot grapes and the Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, so the Merlot is a grapes that we use a lot uh, to have a lot of fruit, red fruit, very intense. Uh, and the Cabernet Sauvignon is much more the spicy expression of the red wines. Uh, so we'll try to, uh, we, we'll open it and I will explain you the type of vinification and the type of winemaking we do on the red wines. And everybody, so have vintage, your uh, yeah, second glass, and you can guys pour. You guys can pour yourself the glass of red wine. <laughs> so we are on a vintage twenty seventeen. So. Um, for the color, this is very deep in color. This is not a. Um, this is very, very dark with a, with a small touch of uh, purple. Uh, I don't have a white. Do you have a white paper to a napkin to see the the, the color? Um, so this is a young wine. Uh, this is a vintage, uh, 2000 and, uh, 2017. Uh, so it's very young. Um, uh, so that's why th this color is so intense. Um, so you, we don't have any uh, uh, aging. Uh, we, we have an aging, but we, we don't have too much aging in bottle. Um, so the first nose, um, maybe it's better to talk about the ferment, the, the wine making before. Um, so we, we, we pick the grapes and uh, we have a, a quite technical uh, um, sorting system. We use what we call uh, density sorting. It means that each berry go in a bus and it depends on the density on the ripening of the berry. If the berry is ripened, she's floating, so she can go in the tank. 
and if it, if it's not ripened, uh, the berry don't float, so she separate and she go for the production of rosé. So we have only the very ripened berry we go in the tank. So we use stainless steel tank. So uh, we do uh, what we call a maceration of three to five weeks. It means that the berry with the skin gonna be in contact with the juice during these three to five weeks. And at, in, in the same period, the wine are doing the, the fermentation. So this is the alcoholic fermentation. So, um, and during that time, we'll do, uh, we'll, uh, do what we call the, the extraction, the extraction of the color and the extraction of the aromas and the tannin. So to do the color and to extract these aromas and this, this potential, we're gonna, we, we're gonna do some pumping over on the tank. So we pump by the, the back of the tank and we pump it on the top. And we do it every day, twice a day. And after these three to five weeks, we debate and we press. The free range juice goes directly in barrel, in French oak barrels, and we'll, we will let it uh, age during uh, it depends on the vintage, but during 10 to, uh, to 14 months. Traditionally, uh, we, we do this for a year. Uh, we use only uh, French oak, but this is a quite uh, unusual size for our barrels. Traditionally, in bottle, we use 2.25 liters barrels, and here we use a 400 liters barrel. So they are bigger, and we have less expression of wood. Uh, it's much more respectful for the fruit. Um, so we come back on the tasting. So the first nose is really the expression of, uh, of the fruity expression of the marrow. You can, you can smell the, the blueberry expression, a little bit of a, a raspberry also. And behind you can feel this, uh, this uh, spice, this red, red spice expression and a little bit of oak. So it's, it's lightly smoky. So in the, in the mouth, this is very round. The tannins are, uh, this is a medium bodied wine. This is not a full body, not too over concentrate. This is a medium body. So this is concentrate, but not over concentrate. You have some freshness, and uh, it's also what we are, what we want to search in the region. This influence of the ocean to have the to have uh, the freshness of the ocean and uh, to have a nice acidity, to have a good balance. Um, so you can feel the tannins. This is very very ripened tannins, not dry, uh, and very warm. So it's it's really easy to drink. Uh, and it, it's already ready open, uh, ready open and uh, easy drinking wine. Mm. All right, since it's a ready drinking wine, I uh, wanted to check with you, how long would you recommend everybody keep it? Uh, um, when you, when you, after bottling date, which would be the best time frame to, to have, to open the bottle? It's, uh, it's two to five years, uh, three to five years. So this is a, uh, 2017. So you have you have a year you have a year in uh, in barrels and uh, um, and if if you could have a year in, in bottles, it's better. Uh, so but traditionally we start selling the wines. Uh, so now we are just finishing to sell the 2017. So when you ship the wines to you, they have already some uh, a wine in, 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 in bottles. I mean, six to, to a year in bottle. So they are ready to drink when, when you have them on the market. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, this is wine, it's, it's, they are better to drink be, between the three to five first years. Um, you fit very well. Uh, this is my lunch time. Uh, and, uh, and when I drink this kind of, of, of red, uh, I really want to have a, uh, pasta, pasta dishes, or 
or a good um, uh, or a, a, a good uh, red meat. It can go also on the, on the on the cheese, but I think it's better. I prefer uh, white wine on the cheese, and uh, for it's it really depends on the on the on the, um, on the peoples. But for me, it fits very well with uh, with some red meat because the wine is juicy. You have a good you have a good acidity, and it can make a good balance with uh, with uh, with uh, meat. All right, Ooh, it's making me hungry as well. I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> um, I have a question from Leroy. Uh, if we drink it in five years versus now, uh, 2020, what kind of difference could we expect in the wine? Um, so uh, in color, it would be lighter. And uh, when, the, when the wine started to be uh, aged, uh, the color uh, becoming more and more on the, on the brown color. So. Um, and on, on the aromas and on the most, it's going to be a, a lighter. Maybe this small smoky expression that I told you at the beginning would be lighter, and uh, and the red fruit would be a, uh, going to be a down, uh, and you will have much more the expression of the spicy Cabernet Sauvignon. The Cabernet Sauvignon is a grape that you can keep longer rather than a, a Merlot. It doesn't mean that a, a Merlot grapes can can be aged. But uh, uh, in the time uh, of aging, uh, the expression of the Cabernet Sauvignon will be much more powerful. Uh, so the expression of, of the smoky expression would be lighter and maybe lighter in, in fruit and, and maybe higher in, in, the, um, in, the, in the spicy. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm going to check if anybody has, he says, thank you. <laughs> um, he says, thank you very much. Uh, little thank you message from Theresa. Unfortunately, he has to leave a little bit early. Um, I'm going to go check if anybody has any feedback or comment and just hear how they're enjoying the wine so far. I'm going to check with Mrs. Winnie, all right? Mrs. Winnie, I'm going to unmute you. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi, Winnie. Can you hear me? All right, maybe she's a bit shy to, to talk on camera. No problem. Uh, I'm going to check then with Mr. Allen. Let's see what Mr. Allen has to say uh, regarding the red or the white. Hi, Mr. Allen. <laughs> Can you hear me? No answer. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen Evan. Oh. <laughs> Are you enjoying the wine so far? <laughs> okay, he's a bit shy, no problem. Um, I actually have a question uh, for Stefan uh, regarding Regarding the appellation, all right, so Bordeaux has many different appellations inside, um, but today we are trying a Bordeaux supérieur. For those who are uh, unfamiliar with the Bordeaux appellation and system, what's the difference between a Bordeaux wine and a Bordeaux supérieur? Okay, uh, all, all, the, all the, the classification of Bordeaux is like a pyramid, you know? So you have the first row and you go lower and lower. So um, to make it easy, in all the region of Bordeaux, including where, where you have the, the first crew, uh, like Saint-Emilion, like Pomerol, uh, or on the left bank, like Saint-Julien, you can produce some Bordeaux wines, Appalachian Bordeaux. It means that this is the lowest, the lowest Appalachians. And if you do a selection of terroir and if you do a lawyer yield and we aged in barrel your wine, you can have access to the appellation Bordeaux superior. Superior means that this is a higher level. Uh, so the yield are smaller, uh, the aging must be longer. So, and traditionally, the wine in Bordeaux superior got a, a, a higher quality. And most of the times they are aged in bowl. 
even if it's not writing uh, on the rules, uh, you must um, HD inbound. Is it easy? I don't know, good, pretty easy to understand for everybody. Yeah. So if, for example, you were saying someone's in St. Julian, he can make St. Julian wine or Bordeaux or Bordeaux Superior wine. Correct? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But there is no chance that they produce Bordeaux wine <laughs> or Bordeaux Superior when you have a St. Julian appellation. It's probably easier, <laughs> easier yeah, to do a St. Julian. <laughs> you might know the price of Chateau Saint Marie. And uh, what I can say also in the, all, on these two wines, this is very affordable wines and everyday drinking wines. So, uh, uh, yeah, you, you don't drink the St. Julian every day, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it depends it depend on your wage. <laughs> yeah, it'll depend on your salary. If you can afford the St. Julian every day, uh, please invite me. <laughs> Um, there's a question actually from Alan, uh, who wanted to see, who just had a comment on the tannin, which was saying that they were a bit, a uh, bit strong. So is he is wondering if he's, it's better to keep it a little bit longer for them to soften, or is it maybe just his particular bottle? Yeah, definitely, definitely, it would be softer and softer uh, with the aging, and uh, and as you recommend me at, before the tasting, if you open the bottle a little bit earlier you will have an uh, oxidation of the wine and, and, and the tannins would be softer. softer. But um, traditionally, we don't have, a, this is really, uh, so, uh, um, sorry, uh, uh, not a, not a, a two a full body wines. So the tannins are present. Uh, it comes from the Cabernet Sauvignon most of the time. So we need a balance with the fruit and the tannins. Uh, we don't want uh, only produce very light wines, uh, light in color with no tannins. So to fit with 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 food and to match with with uh, with, with food, we need to have a, a good base of, of tannins. But ripen, very ripen tannins, not aggressive, not green. Uh, means that we we need to have a very uh, good concentration and a good ripening. And also. The the, the 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 temperatures is very important uh, on, on the and and for the red wine it's very important. If the wine is too hot or too warm, uh, and the temperatures of, of, of serving is is too um, uh, is too warm, uh, the the tannins would be much more pronounced. And if you serve it at the right temperatures, uh, I mean, not uh, this, this kind of wine don't need to be fresh, but uh, uh, if you serve it at the right temperatures, uh, the tannins would be, uh, would be lighter. All right, so maybe, uh, maybe Alan, uh, it was a bit strong and empowering for you, maybe because the wine is a bit too warm. Uh, what would be the ideal temperature, uh, according to Stefan? Because usually they say room temperature, but room temperature in Singapore is not room temperature yeah. in France. So uh, what would be your ideal uh, temperature for this wine? Uh, for me, it's 19 degrees uh, in Celsius. It's less than 20. So... Room temperatures for, for Singapore might be 25, so maybe it's a little bit warm. So I think it's better to, uh, uh, to cool it a little bit. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, let me see if anybody has any question that they would like to ask uh, Stefan or any comment or feedback that they'd like to give on the wine. I'm going to check. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Is it open? No, I saw that uh, Alan, Alan, uh, Alan, and uh, said, uh, he's saying that uh, it's a little. You find a little too much oak. This is a question, so. I think it's just a comment on the wine, maybe. Um, since you were saying that it was a bit powerful, maybe because of the, the temperature, it might be a bit strong in aroma, maybe a bit overpowering. Um, to come back on the, on, on the oak and the way of aging, uh, so traditionally in Bordeaux, it's 2.25 liters well. So this is small one. So you can have sometimes a lot of wood and uh, a little bit over oaky. 
And that's why we have decided to use some bigger one. To be rest, in fact, when you use much uh, bigger barrels, um, the fruit is uh, going to be uh, much more important. So, so it's, a good, it's a good combination between the oak and the fruit. So we want to have the oxidation of the aging in barrel, but we don't have too much, too much oaky taste. That's why we have to choose this kind of barrel. And uh, so, of course, you can feel a little bit the, the, the oak expression, but uh, this is not dominating. Okay. I hope that answered uh, the comments for Alan. Um, I'm going to check with Mr. Charles. Hi, Mr. Charles. I'm going to unmute you to see if you have any questions or feedback or just if you want to uh, say if you like the wine or not <laughs> to Stefan, give him a little comment. <laughs> Hi Charles. Hello. How are you? Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Um, well, you know the funny thing is I um not bought the gotten hold of the wine yet, so I'm I'm uh, taking notes for now, <laughs> so that All I can right. that when I when I get the bottle. Okay. All yeah, right. Perfect. Is, perfect. Well, if you well, ever thanks. want to, if you ever want to go back on the session, just know that uh, it will be available on YouTube once you receive the bottle to go back and taste at the same time with Stefan. All right. All right. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, I have a once another question for Stefan. It's more of a personal question. So. You said you were uh, from a wine growing, a wine making family, um, but did you start off in wine? I asked this question to our uh, to the winemaker last week. But did you start off directly in wine, or did you go off on another path before coming back to the family business? Uh, so I I, I I I think you are familiar with you are very familiar with France and uh, you know the geography. Uh, so I did my study in Montpellier, so this is not, this is quite far from Bordeaux. Uh, and I, I stay for a while in, in the south of France and, uh, and in the Côte du Rhône uh, Valley, uh, in the Rhône Valley, so much more in the south of Rhône Valley. So I, I, I spent, uh, um, I spent uh, two vinification in, uh, two hours in the, in the Rhône Valley to train and to learn uh, and to did my, my, my first experience. And then I, I come back to Bordeaux and I was working for, before working on, on, on my, my family estates, uh, I used to work for another company in a, in a Côte de Blaye. So this is a, just the opposite of the Medoc. Um, as, a, as a vineyard manager. Uh, so I stayed uh, three years over there. And uh, my father, we, my father is not very old. He's, uh, he's thirty years older than me. So I come back on the estate when I was uh, not thirty, twenty-nine years old. Uh, and my my father was not ready uh, to, uh, to to stop and to get retired. So we spent a while together, and uh, I think five or or six uh, August, and then he had been retired in 2005. And I started in 1999, my first vintage on Chateau Saint-Marie. But I have, as, um, I only study uh, um, not only wine, but uh, grape variety and, um, and what we call the geology uh, system in, in the text. So I never learned uh, something different. All right, so you've been in, in wine uh, straight ahead. Perfect, full full speed ahead in wine. I'm, I'm <laughs> okay. I'm born uh, in, in, a, in a barrel. <laughs> you were born in a barrel, all right. <laughs> okay, uh, Leroy actually has a nice comment to say. So he tried this wine a few weeks ago and he's been buying it since. He's really happy with the session. Glad you're enjoying it, Leroy. Um, I have a question from Guido again. So how much of your wines are exported to Asia or China versus uh, Europe and the local French consumption? So before, before the COVID or after? Uh, you... Guido, before or after? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's talk about before and, and after because it's going to change, I think. 
uh, um, our export market is more or less 60 percent our biggest market actually is uh, is canada and us and uh, asian market must be the third one um, and europe is um, um, uh, europe is a force but we still uh, we are still very strong on the domestic market in france uh, we we are much more specialized on the on the Oreca market, so restaurants and uh, and uh, small retail uh, shops. Um, and in Asia, we are not very strong. In China, uh, we have only two in, two exclusive importers, and uh, we don't want to be a two. Um, this is a strategy that we don't want also because you we want an importer who follow vintage after vintage we we we, we don't do you know uh, only a one shot deal so we have two partners in china and 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 actually they are still ordering wine even with a, with a sanitary crisis uh, they are still ordering uh, wines this is uh, smallest quantity but they are they are still uh, ordering and uh, we expect to to um, to, uh, to be the same in uh, next year's. <laughs> we are going to talk about next year's, not this year. I know 2020 is turning out to be a very complicated year, definitely. <laughs> Thanks for the interesting question, Vida. Uh, let me see. Does anybody have another question that they'd like to ask the fan uh, regarding the vineyard in itself? How life is so far in the vineyard uh, <laughs> with the current situation? Sort of most people that we've uh, we've had. Life still continues normally in the vineyard as nature never waits for anyone. So I guess you guys are all in, all preparing the vines right now, like the leaf, first leaves are popping up normally, right? Did you understand? Okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. No. It was I was asking you, how is the vineyard going on? <laughs> Sorry, I was talking with Edith. <laughs> Sorry for that. How has it impacted your team? Uh, Guido has asked. With the with the with the virus. Yeah. Uh, normally we are fourteen people to work. Uh, at the beginning of the uh, of you say uh, confi uh, confined when we, when it start to be confined, uh, we were only seven or eight people, and we still have. Uh, four people's missing, uh, but uh, I think no one's, uh, no one uh, have, have the virus. So um, we finger crossed. Uh, but you know, uh, we we are. Um, it's it's very easy to to have some good distance in the vineyard. Uh, we are not so close. Uh, the problem is much more in the office and at the bottling, where. The, the, the peoples can be very, very close. So it's much more difficult to find some, some good solutions, but uh, uh, the region of uh, Bolo is one of the, the region who have been the less impacted by, by the virus. Uh, the number of people who have been uh, uh, dead and uh, it's uh, 300, 330, uh, 330 people died in, uh, in, in our region, which is one of the lowest regions in, in France. So I think it's going to be, uh, uh, we, we are in a good, uh, in a good way. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. I hope, I hope it, go, it, it improves and then we all uh, get back to our usual lives <laughs> as per usual. Okay, so if anybody has any last questions, last minute, oh, Giovanni has one last question. All right, go ahead. Uh, are you, did I mute you again? Okay. Uh, Stefan, uh, I, I know we, we commented about the uh, the red the, the white wine, uh, but we must say that the the red wine is also equally fantastic. Um, it, it's it's. Awesome. Really good when you buy six <laughs> bottles, you get one free. Um, and we bought seven bottles. I, I think I did a special deal already today. 
But thank you very much. Why, 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 I'm say, why, why I'm referencing the deal is because um, we, we, we now have five more, five, yeah, five more bottles of the red to enjoy, um, not only on special occasions, uh, but um, I think you'll be, you'll, you'll be part of most celebrations in this house for a long time to come. I don't think very long. Yeah, not, not very long. Maybe, maybe, the next, maybe the next week or so. Yeah. Um, that's the first comment. The second comment is, um, it's, it's Marie's birthday tomorrow. Okay. Uh, eating wine uh, for the occasion. Um, and the last, the last comment um, is, we, we couldn't help but notice on the, on the label, um, I mean, I know it says in French, but it, it's probably all vines. Yes. Vieille vine means all vines. Yeah. Um, we, exactly. we quite like all vine, um, all vine wines because um, one, it, 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 it has a lot of flavor, and two is, um, I mean, it's new vines, but it's quite difficult to maintain all vines. Um, so I, I think it, it's, an, it's, a, it's quite a treat. Um, and the flavor is fantastic. Um, we, we might, we might, we might buy a couple more bottles just to age. Uh, but well done. Uh, we'll be yes. enjoying your wine for, for time to come. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let, let me explain you in few words also the, the interest to have uh, very old vines. Uh, when you plant the vines, the roots are uh, at the beginning. They are on the top of the soil and as much as they, they are getting old, the roots go deeper and deeper, and they are searching the minerality and the expression of the soil. And uh, that's why we do this selection. With the old vines, we have, a, we have a different expression. We have much more aromas, we have much more, um, uh, it's much more concentrate, and the wines are, are, are better. And uh, older they are, they, they come on, the older they are. The older, older the better. Are, better they are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But thank Old you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> you said old is gold. I agree with you, Jimin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for those kind comments on the wine. So you guys enjoy the deal, definitely, uh, and drinking the wine in the days to come. Uh, so if and nobody else has any other questions that they would like to ask Stefan, uh, I'm going to bring this session to a close. If any questions come to mind after the session or in the days to come, don't hesitate to send me an email so that I can forward them to Stefan. All right, Stefan, do you have any last words that you'd like to share with everyone? Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, that you have took some time for me and uh, I hope everybody's safe and, uh, and uh, stay at home and uh, take care, everybody. <laughs> and drink wines. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much. And well, thank you to all the participants who joined in tonight for this session. I wish you guys all a wonderful evening. Enjoy the rest of the bottle uh, with food or without, or maybe you guys have finished the first bottle and you're on to the second, no problem. And I'll see you guys all uh, next time. Perfect, perfect. All right, I'm going to bring the session to a close now. And if you guys once again have any questions, let me know. All right, okay. Thank you, everybody. Good evening. Bye. Just before we go off, I'm going to do a small little uh, screenshot uh, before we go. So if you guys don't mind being on camera, maybe get your glass ready so that I can take a picture. All right. Let me see. And on one, two, and three. Okay. Perfect. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a nice evening now. Bye. Thanks, Stefan. Thanks. Thanks, Angela. Thank See ya. You. Good night. Bye. Bye.